So I've had a question from the viewer Steve McStickey asking what is a smart object? Well, it's easier if I show you quickly. So here we've got an image of a car. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J. So we've got car and car copy. Now the bottom one car, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So that's not a smart object, it's just a normal pixel layer. And then the duplicate I've made, I'm just going to call it smart. I'm going to right click and convert that into a smart object. Now what smart objects actually are, is they allow effects, filters and transformations to the layer to be kept almost stored within the object in real time so that it's a non-destructive way of working as in you can always undo and redo things. So if I turn that off and go down to our normal car layer, for example, if I go to the filter menu and let's just add a blur, let's just do lens blur, it doesn't really matter for this. I was going to just add any kind of blur. Okay. Now, if I wanted to do something else, maybe I want to right click warp. Let's just do a, a strange creative warp to the image. Just to show you a um, kind of an extreme example. Say you wanted to do something like this for whatever reason. Okay. So now you've got two effects you've done. You've, you've applied a blur and you've also warped the layer. And you could go on and on and on and do all different kinds of things. You could shrink the, you could shrink it down, transform it down. Maybe you only want to do that big. But now basically, if you want to um, undo any of those steps or just any of those steps further down the line, especially when you've saved the document, and you may have opened it again and your undo history is gone. You're kind of stuck. If you try to increase that back up, obviously try and rewarp it unblur it it's just not going to happen it's going to remain that low quality image whereas the smart object if we do the same here so let's just let's just um let's just apply a blur let's apply a warp so let's do something similar we're going to warp this in okay and then we're going to shrink it right down so we'll basically follow the same steps and we've got the car image, right? So that's this is my object version. So we come back to this. It could be a day later, it could be a week later, it doesn't matter. So now if we wanted to undo the blur, all we have to do is turn off the lens blur layer because a smart object, the filters will then save as smart filters, allowing them to be turned on and off. But not only that, you can go in and edit the filters and the effects in real time and change them to whatever value you want so you can make them even more blurred or even less blurred okay and if you make the image larger it's not going to mess the pixels up it's going to keep the same quality of the pixel integrity as it was in the original whereas as you can see when we stretch that original car back up it's made it go even worse quality and then even things like warp we could go into the warp tool and it's retained the, you know, it's remembered what the warp settings were. So we can even warp it back. We can put that warp back or we can change the warp. And it just allows your images to be kind of infinitely flexible. So if you're only doing a really quick edit that you don't really mind about, and it's just going to be a sort of a really quick, easy job, then you don't need to worry about this. But try to get into the habit of making smart objects on any image that you think there's even a small chance that you might want to go back and tweak some of the effects on in the future. The only downside to smart objects is they do make the file size a bit bigger, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it.